Hey everyone, this is Carlo LaRosso. I am here uh, coming to you again from Capital Audio Fest in Rockville, Maryland, and we are at the Now Listen Here room. And besides Now Listen Here, we have Bill Duddleston from Legacy, who is at who is at the show too. Bill, it's good to see you. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. It's nice to get out and see some of these shows for a change. It is. It's nice to see people again. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Yeah. <laughs> Um, have you been having a Have you been having a great show so far? Yeah, we sure have. Yeah, this is a, the area has really built this show up over the last decade or so. And it's uh, one of the ninety plus exhibitors now. I think so. Yeah. So it's it's a real deal. It is. It's 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 something else. All right. It's been a lot of fun for me too. Um, yeah. So I wanted to ask you. Uh, it's been a while since we've talked, and I wanted to ask you what's what's new with Legacy and what's uh, what's exciting that you want to tell us about. Yeah, we've been uh, basically working on. Uh, improvement of all of our, our products. Um, we offer almost all of our towers now in a powered version, what we call the XD version, mm -hmm. um, where you can either buy amplifier or fully power them. And that's nice. from Valor, Eris, Focus, Signature, and so forth. So, and then Caliber. Um, the other thing is, is that we also have a Wavelet 2 processor out now. Oh, ah, okay. Uh, and for those that are familiar with Wavelet and all the little hmm. Uh, offerings that it has, including from room correction to a, a building preamplifier, uh, eight channels of DAC. Oh, nice. Um, uh, complete digital crossover uh, with, with the Boma room correction and, and ah, appetizing, yeah, yeah. and uh, then uh, an image restoration feature called Omnio, which oh. is what we developed on our Valor system. We're now Pulling that same technology down through the line using the wavelet too. So if someone uses a wavelet with say another speaker that's not the Valor, they can use that that image optimizing technology. That's right. And what it is, it's a vector reconstruction that that allows something scalar to go back to 3D again based oh, wow. on the components. Are there. They're all there's height, there's vertical information in coding in recordings, but you don't get to hear it most of the time because of the way that we place to go back. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, very cool. Do um, you want to show us some stuff in the room and, uh, yeah, sure. and, and we'll talk about it? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. Okay, basically, uh, one of the things I would like to kind of share with you guys is a little bit about our Wavelet 2 processor and what's going on with that. Right now we're using uh, Class D amplification as a Bell Cano amplifier, driving the upper half of the speaker. Uh, the bottom half is being powered by the internal ice power amplifiers, so there's no shortage of power available for sure. Um, what the Wavelet uh, 2 does, basically it's a 64-bit processor. Um, that's like a dream come true for a guy like me to have that capability because I, I have to tell you, I've been waiting for all my life to get to this point where we can actually have enough MIPS to do the manipulations we want to do and be able to um, uh, correct in the time domain, correct uh, the, the sequencing of, of the wave launch as it leaves the loudspeaker and then come out and then correct all the sequences arrivals in the listening room to the listener. And so that's a, that's a big deal. And to correct it in a time domain is so different than when you jack an equalizer up and down. Because if you, if you take a, a graphic EQ, for example, and you say, well, I've got a dip at, at say 200 hertz, and so I raise the power to boost it, all you're doing is raising the cancellation wave that caused it in the first place. And so you're, you're dumping tons of power the speaker's working harder, and you're not, you're getting probably 25% effect for 100% of, 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 of gain. So it's not a very effective way to do things. So that's the advantages of what we can do when we correct in the time domain. Um, the Wavelet basically is a preamp, it's a crossover network. You can run a full range speaker on it, or you can take advantages up, up to a four way. Um, you can hook a subwoofer system up, it, up to it and synchronize with your mains. Uh, it allows you to do all these things. You can do contouring. You can save uh, in the memory bank. Was there 12 memories now, Jim? Yeah, there's 12 memories now where you can actually have curves saved. And uh, so just a, a real powerhouse in terms of technology. Oh, very cool. Uh, as far as the speaker goes, uh, gives you give you a little what for on it. <clears throat> the Aeros basically is a directivity controlled loudspeaker, which simply means that if it, it beams forward and uh, stepping in front of it, you'll hear it almost go quiet. And you'll notice that the, the radiation angle that we're trying to achieve is really this wide. That gives you the widest possible coverage. If I make it wider, what's gonna happen is, with inverse square roll-off, 
And if I tow these things in with the directivity control, when you move this way, it's gonna track you. When you move this way, the speaker's gonna track you and you've got a lot better chance of, of having a, a strong image from all those places. So, Very cool. The speaker's got uh, the internal amplification, dual 12 inch woofers, um, long throw woofers that it uh, uh, actually set some records at some of the places that, uh, uh, that, that make uh, subwoofer measurements on it, and uh, like like some guy I know, uh, <laughs> secrets are high for those. <laughs> but uh, then we also um, have our mid-range drivers that uh, we have, which are uh, Italian-built uh, mid-range drivers and that are totally optimized. These drivers are not like what you're going to see in a typical audiophile speaker. This isn't something something that's got a screaming top end that you got to pull down with all these networks. These are drivers that are smooth and they have extremely low Q and they have rising responses. Why do we want rising responses on them? Because if every driver has a rising response as we go down the line, when you move off axis like this, they intentionally turn themselves down gradually due to the fact that they're kind of large for the wavelength that they're radiating. So that's why I use larger radiating surfaces. Not only is it lowering distortion, but I benefit from the beaming effect that you get when you move off axis. That might be a little heavy for, from some, for some uh, <laughs> subscribers of the site, but you know, I know that some of you guys are gonna really get that and understand that. So. Or actually a little heavy for some of the reviewers on the site too, but we yeah. won't go there, it's All right. okay. Yeah, and, and John's gonna go, <laughs> no. yep. yep. Absolutely, go. yep, okay. all right. totally. <laughs> so, all right, so that's, that's basically what I got to say. Any questions? Um, no, I mean, it, it, uh, it, the music that's been going on in the background sounds Why don't we phenomenal. Start, and, yeah. start the track over again, and let's, let's throw Omnio on there one time and let him hear what the bypasses, the features of this technology sounds like when you kill it. And obviously, since his microphone's not gonna, gonna be totally mm -hmm. sing, same as a set of ears, have to kind of go with what I will. People, people have to accept a verbal confirmation from me. Okay, there you go. Yeah, exactly. So, get it, think about your sound stage most of all right now. Mm. Now you'll notice that sounds sound like they're stretched on a string, and if you were listening to a vocal, that vocal just dropped about two feet. Hmm. on the floor, towards the floor. And that's because you have a direct arrival to the ear, the floor bounce to the ear, and the resultant vector of that is a voice that comes up from about right here. When you correct that floor bounce, you won't get that effect, but go back to... You notice also the timbre of the instruments change? Yeah. There's the, the color that is natural to the instrument, stands out more. Mm -hmm but you also have height that you didn't have a while ago. Yeah. Take it out one more time. Well, that's, I think it's the first time we tried to demonstrate this over YouTube, but you can get an idea. It, so. It's a de definite improvement in clarity and transparency yeah. and just, yeah, yeah, very much so. Very, very right. noticeable. Okay. So, yep, it works. That's all I got. <laughs> Thanks, awesome. guys. Thanks so much, Bill, appreciate it. Thanks everybody for being in the video. Really appreciate it.